Hey everyone. So in last lecture, we talked about central limit theorem. We tried to understand that theorem, but that in that lecture, I didn't took any examples. So today, we are only going to see example based on central limit theorem involving single sample. Okay, because I have not taught on uh, two samples that we will see in the next lecture. But today, only example based on uh, central limit theorem with single sample. Okay, so just for the sake of completeness, let us recall what was central limit theorem. So it said that if x is some population distribution or x is a random variable for which you do not know the probability distribution and it has a mean mu and variance sigma square, then it says then your sample mean x bar, which is a statistic, it's a random variable. When you find the probability distribution for x bar, it will always be normally distributed with mean mu, same mean and variance is smaller because your n is at least definitely one so variance of this will be smaller than the variance of x okay if x is normally distributed there is no condition on n x bar will always be normally distributed but if you don't know the if x is not normal then we take n to be at least 30 so that x bar will follow the normal distribution Okay, so that's what we have seen. Now let's go for the first example. So the problems, I'm going to take five to six problems and all those problems are from the exercise of the Walpole and Mears book. Okay, so let's go for the first problem. The first question is 8.17. So if, a, if all possible samples of size 16 are drawn from a normal population, so you are having a normal population with mean 50 and standard deviation 5 and from that normal population, we are drawing a sample of size 16. Question is, we want to find the probability that a sample mean x bar will fall in the interval mean of x bar minus 1.9 sigma x bar to mean of x bar minus 0.4 sigma of x bar. Okay, so now here x bar is, has come into the picture. Therefore, you should think of central limit theorem. So the question is, we need to find the probability that x bar will lie in this interval. Okay, now see in earlier examples also, whenever we know that if any random variable follows the normal distribution, then you can always convert that normal variable into a standard normal variable, right? And how do we convert a normal variable into standard normal variable with the help of a transformation? What was the transformation? You take z equal to x minus mu upon sigma. So for this, what transformation I will do? Z equal to instead of x now i have x bar which is a normal random variable so x bar minus mean of x bar but what is mean of x bar it is same as the population mu so i can write mu, mu x bar or let's write mu only because we know that the means are same or if you want you can write this as well upon sigma of x bar which is nothing but sigma uh, sigma upon root n because the variance is sigma square by n so what will be the standard deviation for x bar it is sigma upon square root of n so if i do this as a transformation for this normal random variable what i will get is a standard normal random variable so whenever you have a question on x bar thanks to central limit theorem we can always reduce our problem from from finding of x values to the finding of the z values when we saw a standard normal distribution we have seen that finding the probabilities of the x values is same as finding the probabilities for the z values okay so here also since x bar is normal so therefore finding the probabilities for this x bar values it is same as to find the probabilities for the corresponding z values so what do we do is we will find the z value for this and this okay one way is you can put up the values of mu x bar sigma x bar and then you can find then you'll get the values of x1 bar and x2 bar let me call this as x1 bar and call this as x2 bar so what is mean of x bar i think mean of x bar is given to be 50 and uh, sigma the standard deviation sigma is given to be 5 or i think sigma x bar is given to be 5 so you can put these values 50 and 5 what you get is the x1 bar and x2 bar from there one can use this again to find the uh, z values that's one way to do but there is one more simpler way directly you can tell me what are the z values how can you say that because from here what is your small z it is x bar minus mean of x bar upon sigma of x bar right so what does this imply is your x bar the x bar values are nothing but mean of x bar plus z times sigma of x bar so your x this is not so this is your x bar right but how does x bar looks like it is mean of x bar plus z times sigma of x bar so from here if you compare you can see that for this x bar 
the corresponding z value is minus 1.9 and for this x bar the corresponding z value is minus 0.4 so thanks to the theory on standard normal distribution which we have seen earlier you can see the link in the description finding the probabilities this is same as finding the probability of minus 1.96 less than z less than minus 0.4 and now we have seen how to solve this problem this is nothing but probability of z less than minus 0.4 minus probability of z less than minus 1.96 now you open your z distribution table find the probability of this find the probability of this you subtract to get the answer after you use z table that i have already told in my lecture on standard normal distribution so you can have a look okay so but still if you have a doubt you can ask me in the comment section but yeah this is the answer for the first question now let's go for the second question the second question is if the standard deviation of a mean for the sampling distribution of random samples of size 36 from a large or infinite population is 2 so standard deviation is given to be 2 and the sample size is 36 question is how large must be the sample size so you have to find the new n small n where n is the sample size if the standard deviation is reduced to 1.2 so here also since it involves sample mean so we need to n it involves variance so we will use the variance formula for sample mean so let us see the solution for this so in the second problem what is given to us standard deviation for the sample is 2 and the sample size is 36. I want to find what will be the sample size if the standard deviation is reduced to 1.2 from 2. Okay now again since it involves the standard deviation and n for the sample mean so obviously we are going to use again the central limit theorem. So thanks to central limit theorem we know that variance of x bar is sigma square by n. So if I use that formula, what is sigma of x bar? It will be 4 divided by n is 36. So n will come here. So 4 into 36 equal to sigma square. So sigma is nothing but 2 into 6, 12. Now question is, what is n if sigma x bar is 1.2? So again use the same formula. So I get 1.2 square is equal to sigma square upon n. So n is nothing but 144 upon 1.44. So answer is nothing but 100 okay so your sample size will be increased to 100 if the standard deviation is reduced to 1.2 okay so let's go for the third question well the third question is easy so i'm not going to solve it i will just give you a hint so you have a certain type of thread that is manufactured with a mean tensile strength so mu is 78.3 and sigma is given to be 5.6 how is the variance of the sample mean changed when the sample size increased from 64 to 196 so what you do is you find the variance of the sample mean that means sigma square of x bar that means the variance of x bar so for that standard division is given to you and you take n to be 64 then you again find sigma square x bar with the st given standard deviation and n equal to 196 and you see how much it is increased for b part you find the variance of x bar with the given standard deviation or the with the given variance and n equal to 784 do the same thing for n equal to 49 and then you can see how much it is decreased Okay, now let's go for next question. A soft drink machine is regulated so that the amount of drink dispensed averages 240 milliliters with a standard deviation of 15 millimeters. Periodically, the machine is checked by taking a sample of 40 drinks and computing the average content. Okay, so every after some period, one person go and he takes a sample of 40 drinks and he compute the average content. If the mean of these 40 drinks lies in the given interval, mu x bar plus minus 2 sigma bar, the machine is thought to be operating satisfactory okay then the company is satisfied if the mean of the uh, sample of 40 drinks lie in this interval and if it lies if it goes beyond this interval then the company is not satisfied and then then they need to work on that machine in 8.3 the company found the mean of 40 drinks okay so you can take this consideration that the mean of 40 drinks is 236 and now i will we will find this interval and see whether this 236 lies in the interval or not if it lies well and good if it doesn't lies we need to replace the machine so what is given here in this question so mean standard mean is given to be mean of the population is 240 and the standard deviation is 15. now we are drawing a sample of 40 drinks Okay. Now once that person will go and he will take a sample of 40 drinks, he will find the mean of that. What is the mean? Mean is given to be 236. And what they are saying, if the mean will fall in this interval, you will say that the machine is operating correctly. And if the mean will not fall in this interval, that means you need to fix that machine or the change that machine. 
okay so let us try to find what is this interval and after finding the interval let us try to see whether this 236 lies in this interval or not okay so now what is mean of x bar thanks to central limit theorem i know that the mean of x bar is same as the mean of the population so this is 240 minus 2 into what is standard deviation of x bar i know that standard deviation of x bar is standard deviation upon root 10 what is standard deviation 15 upon root 10 is nothing but our root of 40 so this is nothing but if you do some calculation 2 into 15 so this is nothing but 30 by root 40 comma 240 plus 30 by root 40 now you do this calculation and then you subtract from 240 and here also you add 240 to it and i have to, uh, i don't know the answer but i think this will be yeah this will be definitely less than 236 so what i am saying is your x bar lie in this interval because this quantity is less than 236 this is greater than 236 so 236 is lying in this interval therefore from this sample you can conclude that your much and from this sample size and this as a sample mean you conclude that the machine wherever it has been put up at the airport or wherever that machine is working properly okay now let's go for this question 8.23 so you have a random variable x representing the number of cherries in a cherry puff it has the probability distribution as this 4 5 6 7 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.3 0 0.1 first step is we, we are supposed to find the mean and variance of x and then we will find the mean and the variance for the sample x bar when the sample size is 36 and then we have to find the probability that the average number of cherries in 36 puff is less than 5.5 okay so probability of x bar is less than 5.5 so let's try to see the solution for this okay now for this problem i'm not going to solve this problem completely but i'll be giving you almost all of the hint so make sure you the first homework for you is you will post the answer for this question for a b and c part okay so what is the first question the first question is you need to find the mean and the variance do you know what is the formula for mean it is nothing but expectation of x what is expectation of x it is summation x into f of x so what you will do you will do 4 into 0 0.2 plus 5 into 0 0.4 plus 6 into 0 0.3 plus 7 into 0 0.1 that will give you the mean right then what is the variance once you get the mean you separate each of your x from the mean so you do take 4 minus mean the whole square 5 minus mean the whole square 6 minus mean the whole square 7 minus mean the whole square multiply by those given probabilities 0 0.2 0 0.4 and so on okay so i think this part is easy one can easily do this what is the b part you want to find mean of x bar but thanks to center limit theorem i know that the mean of x bar is same as the mean of the population so whatever answer you get here the same answer will come here as well and what is the next part the next part is your job is to find the variance what is sigma square of x bar it is sigma square by n so once you get sigma square by n once you get sigma square from here you put that value here and what is your n you are taking a sample of size 36 so put n equal to 36 you get the answer for the b part okay for the c part now what is the question you want to find the probability that the average number of cherries for 36 cherry puff will be less than 5.5 so probability of x bar is less than 5.5 but we know that since x bar follows normal distribution so finding the probabilities for x bar values is same as probability for finding the z values so from this x bar you try to find the z value so what will be your z value it will be 5.5 minus mean but mean is same as this mean whatever answer you get over here divided by sigma that means here sigma by root n or in short you have found some number over here you simply take the square root of that that's all so if you put this mu n uh, standard deviation of x bar then you get the z value whatever answer you get here put it over here and now you can use your standard normal distribution table and use that and you get the answer over here okay so that's almost the hint for this problem okay now let's go for the next question uh, now let's do 8.26 okay so what does the question says the question says that the amount of time that the drive through bank teller depends on a customer is a random variable with mean 3.2 minutes and the standard deviation of 1.6 minutes if a random sample of 64 customers is observed find the probability that their mean time at the teller's window is at most 2.7 more than 3.5 u 
at least 3.2 but less than 3.4 okay so let's say, try to see the solution for this problem so here is the last problem now so mean is given to you sigma is given to you and the sample size is 64 given to you you want to find probability that the mean time will be at most 2.7 minutes right 2.7 minutes yeah but again finding the probability for x bar is same as to find the probability for the z values because x bar has normal distribution so this is same as probability that z will take the value less than z now what will be your small z it will be 2.7 x bar minus mu upon sigma upon root n right so x bar minus mean upon sigma of x bar that means sigma upon root n so this is 1.664 so that will be 8 so i think now we know all the numbers you get the z value once you have the z value put it over here use the standard normal distribution table and you get the answer okay what does the second part says it says more than 3.5 minutes you want to find probability of x bar more than 3.5 minutes but again finding the probability for x bar values is same as finding the probability for the z values now again you find the z value it will be 3.5 minus the mean 3.2 divided by sigma of x bar which is sigma upon square root of n whatever answer you get you plug in over here but again now here you have to be careful your z greater than so whatever you answer you get you do 1 minus probability of z less equal this value because for a normal distribution table the areas towards the left is given to you okay so this one one has to be cautious over here so that's the answer for the B part and for the third part what does it say it says that the probability should be between uh, 3.2 and 3.4 so 3.2 less equal x bar less than 3.4 right yeah but again the same thing finding the probabilities for the x bar values is same as to find the probability for the z values okay now equality doesn't matter because we're in a continuous random variable scenarios okay now again the same thing you find the so this is your x1 bar this is your x2 bar so you first find z1 value how will you find x1 bar minus mean upon sigma by root n 1.6 by 8 you find the z2 value which is x2 bar means 3.4 minus the mean 3.2 divided by sigma by 8 so once you have z1 and z2 then you know how to solve this right there's nothing but if i call this as z1 if i call this as z2 probability of z less than z2 minus probability of z less equal z1 use the standard normal distribution table find the values you get the probability so i think i have taken decent number of examples if you still have a doubt in any of the problems this or any other problems you can ask me in the comment section i will be more than happy to help you so yeah, thank you and have a nice day.